All right, well, good morning. My name is Eric. I'm from Vermont, and I've journeyed out here to uh, beautiful Denver, Colorado, to have a vintage Saab transmission rebuilt by Jerry Tanner. I've got a uh, 1968 uh, Saab 96 Deluxe at home, and the transmission howls like a banshee. And the ring and pinion is worn, and uh, I can't take it anymore. And Jerry's been good enough to uh, to show me how to rebuild one. At the end of the day, I'm going to have a nice, quiet gearbox. So uh, here I am to uh, to watch and see how it's done by the master. You going to take it back on the airplane with you tonight? No, I don't think <laughs> I, I will. I'd love to do that, but I think it'll come back in a in a UPS box at some point in time. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> Carry on. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. My, I mean, my goal is to take all these pieces and scramble them all together and try to get something that's quiet. I think, we, I think we can do it. By the time the end of the day is over, I think we can, we can, we can meet your goal there. That'd be great. <laughs> so let's get started. All right. All right. Here's what we're going to do. Let's get the jig set up. I, wanna, I need to have you take these off. The, sure. Those housings off. First thing we're going to do is we're going to set the the ring and the pinion shaft in and and set the depth you know uh, there's markings on the pinion shaft where you know you set the depth with shims so the the most critical part of this transmission is getting these shims you know, getting the proper shims uh, and getting this pinion shaft proper Eric, do all the wrenching? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give Eric to do yeah, He's gonna right. be doing most of the. I better get some gloves on. Yeah. My yeah. baby soft hands. We wouldn't want to get them dirty. Okay. First thing we do is, you know, we're gonna be using the existing bearings. We're not gonna, uh, gonna put any bearings in this transmission. We've assembled quite a few trans, or disassembled quite a few transmissions and took all the best gears out of the transmission. Uh, you know, ring and pinions are hard to come by, so we end, we end up. Uh, Eric is elected to use a sawnet ring and pinion, you know, to, for his uh, for his V4. He wants to be able to go faster. He wants to break the sound barrier. Is what he wants to break. There's numbers. There's matching numbers on transmissions. If you can see this number right there, there's two numbers on it. There's this a matching number, which is number 122. And also, there's a number here that says minus eight. Now, what we're doing is we're going to be concerned about this uh, minus eight because that's what we're going to be setting the depth of the pinion shaft with. Also, on this uh, ring and pinion here, you will find a matching number here also, number 122. You know, this ring gear and this pinion gear are matched. They go together, something like that. Never assemble a mismatch one, not unless you guarantee you want to make it noisy. Alrighty, this is a left-handed nut. It goes on backwards. And Jerry, it's uh, my experience that one of the problems, the weak points of the Saab transmission is the fact that uh, the shaft nuts loosen up over time. That's absolutely true. And then uh, what happens is the, the ring and pinion depth changes and if you, don't, uh, if you don't take care of it very soon, then uh, one of these days the whole thing blows up. Yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to use this as, the, uh, this as the thrust bearing. And Eric, what I want you to take and do is I want you to take and put this in there and take this brass hammer All right. and tap that in there until that uh, bottoms out. Am I doing okay, Jerry? Doing good. That. You feel it bottom out? I did, yes. Yeah. Feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to take and do uh, is we're, we're going to assemble this transmission uh, with some... Uh, we, we have to start somewhere, so we're going to take and grab some shims. And we have some shims here that... You know, we don't know where to start at. We might have to end up taking this thing apart three or four times to get it right, but... Um, 
John Moss has got the really nice tool to pull this thing off, but I don't have it, so we have to take and push it out every time we need it. Ah. So, you know, one of these days I'll, I'll, I'll have the tools like John Moss does. I'm going to... I'm going to start out uh, as far as with the depth, with uh, just going by you know, by previous transmissions. I'm going to do a 20. I'm going to do a 20 thousandths and a tw and a, uh, a 12 thousandths is what I'm going to take and is what I'm going to start with. And what we're going to do is we're going to press it together, put the shims in, and you know, and we have the tool to measure it with. Okay, Eric. So this is what I want you to do here. All right. Okay, uh, this is going to go in here like this. Yep. Oh, actually, un unscrew the speedometer. Yep. Drive. So here's the speedometer drive. Let me get a keyway. We'll save him off to the side. Let me get a keyway here. Okay. Little keyway goes in here, like yay. Okay, now, here, why don't you come over on this side here? All right, we'll see places. Easier, I can work upside down. Okay. Go to put this on there and line that keyway up with the key, with the keyway in the gear. All right, just to get us have a look at where just it to is. get started. Okay, I'm lined up. Okay, you're lined up. Then what we're going to take and do is we're going to put this this washer in here on the shaft. All right, on the end, I'll take you that. Take that. We're going to take and put the two shims over that. All right. Put this bearing in the in the race, you know, right in here. All right. Yeah, kind of set it in there. And then put this in the center of that. Let's get right in. Yeah, right in the bearing, yeah. All right. Cool. Now what you're going to do is we're going to put this in here and kind of line it up. Okay. This is everything. thing. I caught my glove. Caught your glove? That's why it's not going in. There we go. There you go, great. Okay, now we're going to press this shaft in. We do it in here like this. We'll move it over and crank that thing in. This is what I wish I had. The wonderful, famous Saab V4 transmission jig. <coughs> One thing we're going to do also here is we're going to put some pressure Put some pressure against this, uh, this bearing race here. All right. So I've I've come up and uh, I'm touching the uh, pinion gear here. But, uh, you know I can do it this way. Just move it over. And what we're doing is we're just putting a little pressure. Yeah, I should have brought something. Okay, now go ahead and crank it in. Yes, sir. Okay, is that good? Here. That's good. You yep. scared me. <laughs> I scared you. Oh, it's scared me. You gotta lubricate them rubber gloves. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta see when you get them on an air ratchet. You know, they wind up on an air ratchet really good. I bet they do. <laughs> you need some oil? <laughs> So if you don't have this jig, yeah. how do you do it? You can't. It must be tough. It's tough. You can do it. I'm the horsepower here. Okay, is it good and snug? 
you know, back it off just a little bit now, just so it's just kind of tight. You know, no pressure, just, you know, just... A little more than that. Yeah, a little more than that. Yeah, no pressure, just, just so it's lightly up against it. Yeah. There you go, now tighten it up just a little bit. There you go, that's All good right. right there. Okay. Now what we're going to do is just put this, uh, this right bit bearing in there, put that in here. And then you gotta wiggle it a little bit. Yeah, you're right. Are these uh, new bearings you're putting uh, in? Th these are just used bearings. What you might need to do is pull it out just a little bit or over. Can you still buy the new bearings? Or? I am not sure. I think you can. I think uh, you can get all the new SKF bearings. socket. And now we'll just a comment about that lock plate. That's the new style, right? That's the new style, yes. Right. Okay, let me get the air wrench. I think this is, this is what I need. Okay, let's see where we're going to put this. Uh, we're going to put that back on, all right? Put this back on here. Go ahead and just put it up against the head of that pinion shaft. Yeah, I'll get that. And remember, this is left handed. you got to go the opposite direction. Yeah. I wonder if you're, I hope you're. Yeah, this one. Then we're just going to. Okay, what you want to do is just kind of squeeze everything together. Is what we want to do. Okay. Okay. Now, this is the this is where the fun begins. Now we take the measurement. Yeah. Now we take, now we take the, now we take the measurement. Are. This is the magic tool, magical tool here. This is why Jerry gets the big bucks for this uh, rebuild because of the magic tool. Yeah, th this is the uh, the, you know, the pinion depth tool. You know that it'll we'll, we'll set it according to the measurement that's marked on this. Um, the minus eight. The minus eight. Okay, first of all, we need to zero it. So what we'll do, you set this on this zeroing bar. And right now it's sitting at one, and it's you, know, you tighten it, you tighten it down. That's it. Tighten it down. And you set it, and you put it right on zero. Okay, so that's our that's our zero reference. Okay. Now uh, uh, the way that it's set up here, that when it goes in, I have it marked. You have a plus on this side. Pl plus means it's it's in too far. Yeah. And as you come back out, it goes to the minus side. So what we need to do is we need to have this small dial on one and this one on eight. For that minus yeah, eight? Yeah, for that minus eight. Right. But it has a tolerance of, of minus eight plus or minus five. Okay. So that means we can go to, to minus three to minus 13. Okay. So if it's between minus three and minus 13, we're sitting fat. All right. So, okay, here's what I want you to do. Put, you grab this you know, and clean your carriages out. And what you're going to do is you're, you're going to set this, you're going to set this gauge right you know, in the saddle, right in the saddle, and you're going to put this little pin thing right on the right in the right center, in, they have, not in the center, on the the, the side of the crown here, the side of the crown here, kind of on a spot. All right. Okay, we're not even close. Here, move over. Oh, you know, come over this way. Okay. 
Okay, so right there, you know, it's it's on one, you know, because we were we were at one point zero. Right. Now we're at one point five. Okay. So we're a half a millimeter. Uh, let me see here. Which put, way put are that, we? Yeah, let me. I have to always think about this. Okay, so we need to. What we're doing is we're too far out. Okay. So we need less shim. Yeah. So what we need is we need we need less shims. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we got to take her apart. Yeah. So what we need to do, we're sitting about, you know, point five. We should be point eight, and we're point oh eight. There are actually eight here, and we're fifty right here. So we have to take and go. Was it forty two? Okay. And 42 uh, is, is about uh, 40, uh, 0.42, you know, uh, one millimeter is 40 thousandths. Okay. Okay, and a tenth of a millimeter is four thousandths. So what we need to do is we need to come four, eight, 12. You know, we need to come about 15, we need to take about 15 thousandths out of it. Okay. Okay. So the shims are, are inches. And the gauge is metric. Metric, yeah. So you're doing the conversion. You're just doing the conversion. Roughly. Okay, makes sense. Okay, now what we need to do is this is where the tool that John Moss has is really cool. <clears throat> but unfortunately, I don't have it. Oh, so this is where we got to take the whole assembly yeah. back now out. Now we again. have to press it all back out again. All right. Which isn't that big of a deal. So the first thing to do is take the nut off. Yeah. Keep my ass left handed. Yeah. Great. And we're, so what we're going to do is we're going to press it out now. All right. Okay, but when we press it out, <clears throat> we need a special tool. Special tool number 7841210. This goes right here in his gear. I don't know if you can, I can't get your finger out. What it does is when you press it out, it holds this gear, because this gear is pressed onto the shaft here. I see. And so what's going to happen is once you crank it, while I go ahead and crank it. All right. Say when. Keep going. It'll, it'll just bottom out. Keep going. You'll feel it get a little tighter pretty quick. There you go. Now, now keep it's going. Tight. Yeah. Now keep go. going. Yeah, all right. <clears throat> so what you're doing is that holds that gear, you know, from bottoming out. Tell you what, this jig is the greatest. <laughs> is it free? Keep going. There, there you she go. goes. You'll know when it's free. Yeah, you're right. You know, one thing I want to do here before you too carried away. No, at this point, do you know exactly what shim to put in? Well, what we <clears throat> what we have is we're sitting at 50. We need to go to uh, we need to, need to go to eight. So um, so we got to go 42, and 42 is about or 0.42. Let's see, four, eight, twelve, sixteen is about 18 thousandths is what is what we got to go to. Let me get a rag here. Ah, there's one right here, Jerry. Okay, cool. Just put some grease in that bearing. So the new shim is going to be around eighteen thousand. Yeah, you no. Know, so what we need to do is we're we're sitting too far out. Right. So, so what we need to up. what we need to do is locate this shim here. So here's the, the two we had in there. And I think one was a. Um, let's see. I think it's over here. Okay, so what we got here is we got 32 thousandths, and we need to take 18 off that. So what's 18 off 32? Oh, that's higher math for me. That's 14? Yep. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, 14. Okay, so what we need to do is we need a combination of somewhere about 14. So that 20 and 12 was way too thick that okay. I put in. So, so we need to come up with 14, as I say 14? Yeah. 
So six, six, twelve. Okay, four, eight, twelve. So roughly then. So fourteen, you said? Yeah, we need a fourteen. But what about two fours and a six? Is that the? Is that, oh, that's fourteen. Yeah, that'd be fourteen. Would that be the way to go? That, yeah. The, what school did you go to? I don't know. I never <laughs> went to school. I went to University of Maine. Okay, two fours. <laughs> Okay, so there's two fours, and we go for a six. So that's fourteen. There you go, higher man. <laughs> gotta. You had me stumped there, man. <laughs> Jerry, you gotta be aware. You got a Sparky doing mechanical work here. That's right. <laughs> that's okay. electrical guys. We don't know so what so we're doing. So now this should be fourteen, fourteen or fifteen. Yeah. So there you go. Okay, About so 15. there's fifteen. So that's pretty close. Fourteen yeah. and a half, fifteen, right in there. Okay, so let's put, go ahead and put it back together now. Oh boy. So now you're going to do the same procedure again? The same procedure all over again, yeah. See, this is where that tool John Moss has, because he can just leave everything in here. Ah. And he's got this little three-sided three puller that pulls the bearing off. And you can work right through there. Then, then you can reach in there and pull this cone off. Okay. And then just slide a shim in there and pound, pound it all back together, and you won't have to do what we're doing. All right. But, you know, it works. I, I always like doing things hard the hard way. Well, if you don't have the tool, you don't have the tool. Yeah. Okay, let's do it again. So, let's which way did this guy go? Like this like, or like Correct, like that. Oh, the other way. The other way, all right. Go ahead and you, you grab this here. And got do it. it. And I got to see where that... <coughs> Oops, now that, that key came right out, Jerry. Okay, we'll take it apart. Just pull the, you know, pull the pinion shaft out. Let's just tap it in. I'm struggling. There's that. Or just just pull it out. You use the cases that is a hammer. There she goes. You guys want to warm up on your coffee? Uh, the fresh pot should be ready. Oh, sure. And kind of tap it in and kind of tap it down just a little on the front so it's so a little easier a little to go into the go in little there. taper to go in. Now what do we lose here? This guy. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Don't scare me now. Extra parts rattling around in there. <laughs> okay, okay what now comes next? this this goes in there? Free shims that are fifteen thousand. If you guys have a need to water a tree, this is a fir tree right here by my truck. Uh, All right, that's the one to water. water. It's the one that needs water to it. <laughs> okay, so you got the shims in there. Yes, sir. Okay, great. And then just put her together. All right. So well, let's put this back up here again. You know, raise, raise the, raise the, raise it up. Tom, we Tom. found it. Scared me there. Where's that little pair of pliers you have? I think I put it in the Losing everything. Oh, I got it. I think the table's not that big, eh? Yeah, we'd be in good 
trouble. Okay. All right. Press her in. Press her in. Now back. back it off until it's just loose, you know, just loose until it's free and then just put a little preload on it. Some people set that depth tighter or looser depending on whether it's a, a race transmission or anything like that. Not really. No. Yeah, okay. You probably noticed when you took all those trannies apart how yeah. much how much backlash was in there. There was a lot of some of them you could just grab the drivers and clunk clunk. clunk yeah, you clunk. can grab this whole thing and clunk yes. clunk. So what happens is is you know it, when you, when it's further out, it's going to have less backlash. Right. You're going to find out when you put this. Yeah, you, know, you talked about those different size shims over yes, here. Yes. Right. Well, you know, those things really aren't that critical if that pinion depth is correct. Is right. Yeah, you're right. But you'll always have some play in it. Yeah. Okay, let's get the gauge out again. And, uh, all right. Might be smart, though. Maybe always just stick it on there and just give it a zero. See where we are, huh? Because it might have got bumped. It sits right on zero. That's what you're looking for. Yeah, it's good. Okay, and we'll do it again. So I'm not sure where So I'm it looks like sure. it goes on this side over here. Okay. Right in there. Something like that? Yeah, no, just ro ro rotate it until it peaks out. Okay, so it peaks out. Yeah. Is that so, yeah, hold it in here. All right. Okay, so we've got our tolerances. Right now you're sitting at four. Right. Minus four. You should be minus eight. I mean, eight plus or minus nine. I would rather like to see it more on the, on the further out and in. The end, so, okay. fresh coffee. It's uh, just made, so it's so. So what we got here? Maybe a little stronger. Is we got? Uh, you know, we're sitting at. You know, actually, it looks like we're sitting at five. Right. And we need to be at eight. Yeah. So in each one of these marks, like from zero to ten, is is four thousandths roughly. Okay. So right, what we're doing, if we want to get it, you know, pretty much, you know, you know to send the eight, right now we have, you know, twelve in there. So if we take, you know, two thousandths out, that should give that should set us right, almost perfect. It would be sitting right at ten. You'd be sitting on, on the on the uh, you know you'd be sitting minus ten. Yep. And I would rather have it sit, you know, close to close to the number, if not a little more minus, than it would be plus. Okay. Because that that'll tighten up your backlash. All right. So let's take it apart one more time. All right. Okay. Yep. Pretty cool tool, isn't it? It's a great tool. <laughs> Thank you for the coffee. Sure. Um, should I uh, stop videoing while you, since you're going to repeat the procedure? We might as yeah. well. Yeah. Huh? No sense doing it again, right? Okay, so I'll.
I'll shut it off until you get to the next step. To the next step, right. Or I'll turn it on right when you're done and you say, well, it looks like it's... It's about right. It's, it's about right. Okay, so we got a 4.4 four and a 6 in there. I'm going to turn on your compressor to get it up to... It's not oh, okay. Water, while the thing is off, right? When you put this nut on, this nut should be flush pretty much with the end of the pinion shaft. We just had a little glitch down here where something got left out on the inside. I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. <laughs> that was Eric's side. Yeah, it was my fault. <laughs> that was, yeah, and it, it, it was stick, sticking out three threads, so you always have to kind of be visually, you know, attuned to something that's not really, you know, not really right. Another okay. another comment too is the fact that I mentioned earlier one of the problems with the with the Saab transmissions is the shaft nuts come loose, and this nut and locking device is the later style. It's much beefier. It's much tougher. And it really, uh, it really holds it together a lot better than the early style. I know I've taken apart a dozen transmissions, almost every one. Shaft nuts are all loose. Yeah. Here's the early style shaft. It's just a really thin little washer with a tin little ear here, and the little ear breaks off. And when it breaks off, the nut will back off. If you notice how this, uh, you know, this right here is skirted. It's got a big skirt, and this washer has three little grooves. When we get all done for our final assembly, we'll take a punch and punch that you know, into those three grooves, and that thing's there for the life of the tranny. Okay, good deal. Very good. Yeah, zero it. This is called backyard mechanic. We're in Tom's backyard. So, uh, so Jerry, we're a little bit off here. So just ro roll the dial until you know, the face, you know, the, 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 the oh, face. Oh, the face. And just wiggle it and twist it. And I see. All right. Okay, cool. Stick that baby up there, and we should be sitting about, a, I think, minus 11 or something is what I'm guessing. No, I want you to do it. I want you no, to I want hold you it to do and it. feel it. You want me to do it? Yeah. Uh, you know what? We should have added two instead of subtracting two. Don't tell this to the people <laughs> watching the tape. We went the wrong way. We're exactly where we're supposed to be, but we should on the added, other side. We should have added two instead of subtracting two. All right. Because what it needs to be, it needs to be, you know, because we're sitting here, you know, and it needs to be thicker. That means that that has to go that way, All which right. means that shim has to be thicker by two thousands. So which way is plus and which way is minus again? Okay. Plus is this way and minus is this way. Okay, so we're on the plus eight yeah, side. Yeah, we're on, we the should, we're on the plus we eight side. We should have been minus eight. Yeah, so, okay. Don't tell anybody. And he's going to a school up in, uh, up in Maine and uh, called College of the Atlantic. So he's with a bunch of other tree-hugging, earth-loving, nature-loving kind of kids, and he's having a great time. Alrighty. All right. We're in our final setting. Um, if you remember where it said, uh, it said minus eight. That was etched straight into yeah, the end of the pitch, pinion. Uh, Correct, yes. So what we do is uh, with this gauge here, if you notice, if you rotate the gauge, I'm just going to over, over uh, emphasize, if you rotate the gauge, you want to take and rotate the gauge till it peaks out. Hold on a second, let me get it on the right spot. To where it peaks out and starts going backwards. And uh, keep in mind, this side is a minus and this side is plus, and we're supposed to be sit or reading at minus 8. And it looks like what we got is, you know, the, the final reading looks like it's minus 9. So That's keep in mind, we got minus 8 plus or minus 5, so we can go from minus 13 to minus 3. So we're pretty much dead nuts. We're, we're right dead nuts. The center. Beautiful, Jerry, beautiful. We're dead nuts. We did it. Nice job. Only took six tries. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't tell anybody that. John Moss would be proud of me. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Do you ever make it uh, on the first try? No. When you build these? Yeah. No. I don't think anybody does the first try. Okay, let's uh, kind of okay, take, take a second and let me put these shims and try to regroup I think this, this stage you're declaring victory, right? Declaring victory. Or declaring victory. On that part. Yeah. Okay, you can fire away. Talk about what the next stage is. Okay, we've got the we've got the pinion depth set. We're not going to take and um, 
We're not going to take it apart yet or uh, glue the Loctites on here yet until we assemble the rest of the, the gear. So our next step is going to be able to put the, um, you know, the one two shaft in and the uh, and the three four three four or the one two reverse shaft with all the gears, and then we got the three four shaft that uh, we're going to put in. So okay. that's going to be our next step, and the transmission is going to start taking shape now. Okay. Okay, synchronizers, uh, you know, I've always used used synchronizers, and I have no problem with used synchronizers. If they, the only reason why I have a problem with them, they don't meet a certain criteria. Uh, a synchronizer is a little, you know, a tapered synchronizer, and a synchronizer acts as a brake. But when you put the synchronizer on there and you give it a good tug, if you, if you look here, you can see that the gear is pretty much level with the top of the synchronizer, and that's indicating that the synchronizer is good. And you'll see a gap in between here, uh, you know, and, the, and if you take a feeler gauge, you know, the more clearance you got, the better the synchronizer is. I've seen some synchronizers where the synchronizer is actually down against the gear, and this gear is, is you know, is, is protruding the top of the synchronizer. So if the synchronizer meets that criteria, it's a it's a good synchronizer. So which gear is this? Th uh, this is uh, fourth gear. Yeah, this is this is you know, fourth gear. This is the high speed gear. And if, and if you ever have any synchronizers that are weak, you always put the the weakest synchronizer, the one that's down the lowest on fourth gear, because fourth gear doesn't take the hard shifting. You always put the really good synchronizers on first, first second, second, and third. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. So all those synchronizers are interchangeable. Uh, yeah, first, second, third, fourth are all the same. Tom, you might want to focus over here on this as well as on cleaning this out. This, uh, this shaft here, the end here, is where the freewheel assembly goes. And uh, every transmission I've taken apart, uh, for some reason, a lot of crud and stuff and filings and all just, just totally uh, collects in this area. And I know uh, on a couple of my cars, sometimes you, and I like the freewheel, I will say that. I think it's a great uh, kind of a unique feature for the cars, even the V4s. But sometimes you, uh, you'll take off from a stop Put it in first and let the clutch out and nothing happens. And it's because the freewheel assembly is all sticky with crud inside there. Um, so it's important to clean this, uh, this whole thing out because that's where a lot of it collects over time. Uh, I know some people on a, on a working car, uh, they'll put, drain the gear oil out and they'll run some automatic transmission fluid in there for a day or so and, and try to free that up and then put the gear oil back in. Um, doesn't often work very well, but uh, I know people that have tried it, and I've tried it, and it hasn't worked very well. So the idea now is uh, when it's all apart, clean it out, and starting off with a clean unit. I'm not good at documentary. <laughs> well, for a while, and oil will go out of the transmission, so we uh, I use, usually use you know some really light light grease. So oh, that's some backup lube that'll stay there even if even if you lose all the oil. Even if you lose all the oil, yeah. Okay. Okay, you got all the gears laid out there in front of you. Yes. Uh, what we have right here is um, we have uh, yeah. This this is the, with the gear stack. This is the uh, the one two reverse uh, the one two reverse uh, shaft. Here's your reverse gear. Here's your first gear. Here's your second gear. And then on the on this shaft here, you know, we have uh, we have fourth gear. We have the shift muff. And then we have third gear. And supposedly that's all that's all going to go inside here. Supposedly? Supposedly. Looks impossible to me. Yeah. You think it's going to work? I don't know. And all these gears are the best gears from uh, how many different transmissions? Um, well, I got, I got to tell you one one thing here. Um, this fourth gear is a match gear, and uh, uh, we talked about earlier about the transmissions you know, having match gears, match numbers on it. If you look at this number right here, there's a number twenty-seven eighty-seven. 
you know, and it says L, and I'm not sure what the L stands for. But uh, this gear that's, that it matches against right here has 2787 on it also. Uh, on the on the on some transmissions, for some reason, they match them. But if they don't have numbers on, I usually it's okay to mismatch them. But I try when I disassemble them, I always look for these numbers. And if the numbers are are matching, then I do I do something like this here, where I take the gears when you disassemble it and you wire tie them together, because because these numbers are matched. And these numbers, there's no match numbers on here, but these two gears came out of the same transmission. So if, the, match. if these early style ones are supposed to be matched and the later ones aren't, well, why not just keep them together? Sure. And then, because it's a lot of work to tear it out and it makes noise. Let me find this gear here. This gear here too. This has a number 343, if you can see that number right there. And on this gear down here, there's a matching number 343 on this. So those are those are matching gears, and so those are mated together. So when you put them together, you can almost guarantee it'll be quiet. And that's another thing: if they're not if they're not numbered, when you disassemble it, you know you you you, you keep them together. You keep them together. Step. Okay, the next step is, is you want to come over here? Me? Yeah. All right. This is what we're going to do here. This goes, the little bearing goes right here. All right. It you know, goes in place right there. All right. Put a little grease on it so it holds it. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to take and kind of hold this stack together. We're going to pull this shaft out of it. Yep. And what we're going to do is we're going to take and lower yep. the shaft in here and then try to stab it. All right. So you hold this. You kind of hold you. You might have to kind of hold your fingers underneath it. Yeah. And kind of put it in and just kind of hold it in place, just so it holds all the gears. You can't you can't put them all the way through. There's a little the center hub here has a spline. You have to rotate. You have to rotate it to get that spline just right. All right. Once, once, it, once you get that spline just right, it snaps right in place. It's okay. Easier said than done. It's okay to kind of let them fall apart a little bit because you can kind of put them back together. I don't feel like I'm. Here, let me let me see real quick. Get the first gear. There you go. this gear right here. I see. All right. Okay, we're just going to leave that shaft out just a little bit because we have to put a gear in here now. Right. Okay, now we've got the same stack on the top. Well, by the way, I put those brand new bearings, those two brand new bearings, in that fourth gear here. All right. And that fourth gear is just perfect. So we got that washer on there. We've got this stack here. Oop, I better put the sink right on. That's kind of an important part. Yeah, make sure the synchronizer's on the other one. Okay, the same. Same thing. Pull okay. it apart. Yeah, now what we're going to do is we're going to pull this apart, and then we're going to put this, this yep. one here on the top. All right. Let's see how I want to hold that. Seems like I want to go more like that. And this guy's going to go right in here, you're thinking. How come it doesn't want to fit? Feels a little tight there. Okay. What is it? There it there goes. goes. All right. There you go, stab it in there. Heard it snap together, didn't you? I did. 
Okay, cool. There you go. And then the shaft. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to put this little thrust washer down in here. Oh, wow. You know, before we put that shaft all the way in. Okay. And, you know, it's just pretty simple. You just put it down there and you just put a little pressure on the shaft. And then you come through here. You take your finger. Look, look at this end here. It's sort of center. You can see it. There you go. Wow. Okay. Hey, we're... We're doing good now. So you got all those gears in there. Got all those gears in there. Oh, amazing. Okay, now the next step is is, is we need to take and, uh, and work on this this front end up here, and we need to install this uh, you know this gear. This is the uh, you, know, the you know the power comes in here, and this gear transfers the power down to this shaft. You know, you know, which you know, which the shafts will spin free. Like right now, the shaft spins free with no gears turning. But when, but when you engage, yeah, this isn't. Yeah, yeah, th th these will spin here, and the gears don't spin. But when you engage this into this gear, then the, the power gets transferred from here over to here. It gets transferred down to the bottom gear, and then it goes out to your ring and pinion. Yeah, make sense. It sure does. Okay, now there's a little cup washer, this little dude right here. There you go, put that. That goes, that goes cup forward in this shaft right here. You know what we might do? Just maybe rotate the, the gearbox a little bit. All right. Because we're going to be working on this end a little bit now. And okay, so cup forward. Cup forward. That's on there. Okay. Now uh, put the uh, engage this gear up into here. You know the gear goes up into here, and it's got to go over the shaft here too. So you have to kind of oh, kind of angle it in. There we go. I think I go. I don't know if I go or not. Okay, this is where you come. Does it look like it's going in that shaft? I can't really see. It's a shadow. Can you see? There it goes, up there. There we go. Yeah, it's going Is in. Is it going in? Yeah. Cool. This is where If you can see from this end, it is looking like it's going in it's there. Okay, it looks good. like it. That's what we want to see. But not all the way, though. That's because there are, you know, we need to engage, you know, the splines of this into the shaft here. All right. So sometimes you might have to rotate the shaft. Until, it, until that gets in there. All coming together now. You can't pound this gear all the way in until you get this gear up into here. I see. And then now this is starting to. Okay. Looking good. Okay, now what we need to do. I don't know if you can see this or not. You know what it might be smart to do? Let's turn the tranny around so it's in the sun. We need to rotate this shaft here. See this keyway here? Yes. We need to rotate the shaft so we can stick a keyway in here now. Okay, there's the keyway. Okay, let me do the keyway. There 
you go. Why don't you stick that keyway in there now? All right. Just kind of get us started in there, and then we'll. So take it was a, just a square one. Just a square one. And get us started in there, and then we'll just take a punch and just kind of tap it in. Easier said than done. There you go. That's what tra transfers the power. You know, power into the gear. All right. So what retains that key? What's that? What retains that key? From okay. Something? Now what retains this key is the uh, this contraption. <laughs> and there's that little gear that and goes that, on that there. Gear, that little gear goes on there too. So, uh, where's that gear? There's, oh, there's a bunch of them there. Yeah. Okay, now this little gear goes on there like that. That's a little friction gear. And then this little cover, there's a little keyway. And this little keyway goes into this. I need to tap this down just a little further. This little keyway goes over this here. And this little lock tab goes over this here. And then the nut. And that okay. one's right hand thread, right? Yeah, this is this is right hand thread. Okay, now um, you know, now that it's just pretty much assembled, you know, we haven't got the lock tabs on it yet or anything. But, you, know, you know, at this point, you always just kind of turn it and wiggle it and twist it and move it. And you, know, you can shift to a gear. Then you shift, you can shift to this gear now. Yeah. And you don't feel any binding. You shift to this gear. Yeah. You don't feel any binding. You shift to this gear. You don't feel any binding, and then you bring the reverse into play. And it feels good. Feels good. See something? Oh, something's jamming up here. That's this gear. Let me shift to the reverse again. Yeah. Great. Okay, we're going to start putting lock tabs on the two main shafts right now. So here's what I want you to do. Uh, get that uh, aerosol, this little aerosol. Oops. And I want you to squirt you know, this stuff on the threads. Right, to clean the thread to clean before the lock tight goes yeah, on. Yeah, to clean the thread, yeah. Let it. One do it more again. time. Do it a couple, two or three times. Than this here too now. Just so that Loctite has something really good to stick to. Yep. Okay, same way for back here. Let's keep this one back here too. Hold on one second here. All right. Upside down, then stick it in there. There we go. Cool. That's right. good. Okay, now go ahead and put that baby in there. I think I heard uh, this you. guy first, right? Uh, yeah, actually, you're, you're correct. Yeah, that. Uh, let's see, which way does it go? I think. I think. Doesn't it go in like that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Can you turn that? Rotate that a little sure. bit so I can see the keyway. Okay. 
that's what holds the shaft down there too. Okay, heard. I'm gonna run down to Schwab's. I need to get some uh, screw-in cartridges. Okay. Hi, Avis. Hi. How are you doing? Good. Good. Hey, Avis, why don't you come here a second? Oh God, I'm freezing. It's cold out here. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta spend time in the sun. And meet Eric. <laughs> Hi. Hi. This is Eric from Vermont. Hi, Eric from this Vermont. Is, this is Avis. Really life. happy to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thanks for your hospitality. I really appreciate it very nice. much. How's it going? He brought, a, he brought a quart of Vermont maple syrup for us. Wow. <laughs> yeah, um, I figured coming from Vermont, that's the one thing to bring, right? Yeah. What do we, what when we go back to visit people, what do we bring from Colorado? To take See, a little, yeah, that's, uh, a, that's how you get to that little oddball nut way back there. Yeah. That's a special tool that goes with it's that? It's called a crow's foot. Is it unique to this transmission? Or is no, it? It's, it's, it is, because you have, to have, you have to have something like that to get back in there. Not so easy. This, is, this is what I made before I got that tool. <laughs> yeah. I put a pair of vice grips on it and tighten it. How tight yeah, do I give go? it a good yeah. snug. Give it a good snug. I know John Moss says there's a specification on that. Yeah. I, I got a torque wrench here if you need it. I don't even know what it is. Do you want to give yeah, it the last feel? Because you get, get, get the feel for it. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. I bet. That baby's tight. Good. I'll do this one here, too. All right. I bet I've got the torque specs in the manual here. I bet you do, too. Everything's just a crush sleeve, and everything crushes together, and there's no bearing pressure or nothing. You know, so there's no preload on bearings you have to do. You just want to make sure it don't back off. Go ahead. Just give it a big tug. All right. Ready? Yeah. We don't want that baby to come apart. No, sir. Do no, to, to keep it from coming apart, you depend really on the Loctite. Loctite, correct. Yeah. And you, used so to, you, you didn't skimp on the blue Loctite, right? No. And we made sure the threads are extremely clean, so there's no grease. That way the Loctite can adhere properly. Okay, now at this point down here, you just basically you just you know feel it. You know, anytime you touch something, you always go back and check it. Make sure nothing's binding. Make sure nothing's binding because you might have done something. Let's see, there's third gear. That's fourth. There's fourth gear. There's first gear. And there's second. There's second gear. And then reverse. And we got reverse. Look at that's cool how the gears all go backwards, isn't it? Yeah, you just slide the reverse gear. There's third. third gear. There's fourth gear. You can feel the transmission go faster too when you do that. There's first gear. There's second, there's second gear. And they all they all sound quiet, they all sound good. There's no gear whine. You know, there's all play and everything just feels really good. That That's smooth. what we want. That is smooth. That's great, yeah. huh? So couldn't be better. The important thing is that Eric says it's uh, like you just said, couldn't be better, huh? Two thumbs yeah. up. Looks great. So, okay, now let's do the pinion lock of the shaft. Yep. We're gonna take the air gun and uh, take that uh, pinion nut off. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, go ahead and give it a big. Keep How's going. that? Keep going. Get one more. I don't want to break your table. Okay. There you go. So that baby's good, huh? I think so. Cool. Well, here, actually, I'll tell you what, before we do that, let's put the ball. You put in the detent ball? Yeah, in. put the detent ball and then. Okay. So 
which shifter was that? First uh, and second. That's the one two. One two. And then this one here. Third and fourth. Uh, no, this is reverse. Yeah, that's reverse. Oh yeah. Groove. Okay, then you got uh, third and fourth. Third and fourth. Okay, okay. that's the last of the shift uh, forks in. Yeah. Okay, now what we need to do here now? Line that guy up and push it in. And yeah. So I, gonna, do you use this little guy here? Yeah. What you got to do is you got to get directly on the very top of that ball. All right. Be conscientious where that ball's at, because if that thing falls out, you know, we got to make sure we got to find it. <laughs> all right. All okay, right. push think, down. I think I'm on there. Now let me just push you, down. You gotta push it down all the way. I know it. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crowd that screwdriver. You know, yeah, I know it. Down. I know how that works. But I can't seem to... Oh, the ball went, went that way. You know, we might... Okay, I'm, <clears throat> I'm gonna shut this tape down and uh, go okay. to another you... tape. Okay, something. I use I, did I teach you something? I fought those things all the time, man. <laughs> Did I teach you something? I can't believe it. What was the trick there? To use uh, an extension or an actual socket. Oh, yeah, look, hey, look at. Right. Oh, good catch! Good catch. That was the other one, huh? No, I didn't it was that one. Yeah, it was that one. So the reason, listen, the reason I've used a socket is because the 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 little oh, square part tends to hold the ball right in there. Really? Yeah. yeah cool. I don't I don't know if that's too big. That's too big. Is that guy a little smaller? Or that's, huh. but I don't know. Try that extension maybe again. That's a. Let me because it goes right down in there. All right. The thing is, when you get that in there, you gotta, you know, because I'm thinking that you know it has to kind of you know the edge of this has to catch on that ball. Right. At least if cover that's the too ball. too big in diameter, it won't do yeah, it. Yeah, it won't do it, and that's kind of why I've. The small one, huh? Let's give it a shot again here. All right. Tell me when you're... Okay, on there. Go. Now take your other one. Actually, I think it worked. I'll shove it all the way in. Yeah, there's no ball came out the end, so... All right, it worked. Good deal. Yeah, okay, it's in there. You can feel the detent. Yeah, cool. One, one for three. Good go. job. Don't tell me that won't go down in there. <laughs> okay, I won't tell you. Life's a game of recovery, you know? <laughs> That's right. We can leave that one like that. That ain't gonna... Okay, are you ready? Is there a ball in there and a spring? Yeah, there's a ball and a spring in there. All right. Okay, we're down. I'm pressing. Okay. Go. Okay, you're up against my... There, okay, go ahead. Okay, ouch, I'll hold up, hold on, hold on. Gotta get my finger out of the way. That appeared to be a four-handed job. Do you do you generally do that alone, Jerry? Uh yeah, I do. Catch the spring? Yeah, I cut cut the spring on that one. So that's why we got all square. Where's your uh, shaft? That's pretty tight. There it goes. Okay. I wonder if you can get a screwdriver or something to kind of pry it up.
Okay, hold on. Let me back out again. Let me get the ball. Oh, the ball's right there. Okay, take the shaft back again. I think the ball bounced off its. There it is. Put that shaft up in there. Just kind of get it started. Just ever so slight. There you go. Now. Doesn't feel like it's going down. Okay, go. That's not moving. I just tap it in there. Ready? Yeah. What do you think? You got it. Okay, go do it again. Keep going. We got it. You sure? Oh, hold on. No. I don't think so. Let's take it. Just take this back out. Seems like the ball's not going down all the way. Ready? Oop. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Okay, the ball came off again. We'll get her. This is, this is the hardest thing, I think. We need to we can put the back cover on now. Now let's get that back cover. Okay, all three shift forks are in place. And that was not easy. And you didn't lose any of the detent balls, huh? No. Okay, at least you accounted for all of them. Yeah, we, we, won't, we don't know what happened to these, though. <laughs> Not many springs were damaged. Only two springs lost their lives in the <laughs> assembly of the transmission. Okay, now... adding some shims and the purpose of these shims in the back is the sole purpose is to hold these bearings tight into the case to keep the bearing from walking to keep the shaft solid. Um, and how do you know how many shims to put in? Uh, well typically I just always put two in because you know, every time I take one apart you know, the same way for you you seem like there's always two in there yeah and there's no difference in the thickness on them you know, they just stack them up and it's always two two two. So and what that does, that just takes and you know presses up against these the bearing housing right here, right here, and right here to keep those shafts solid into the tranny case. Now we're going to put the gasket on it, run these shafts down there, and then we're going to adjust the shifting, and then then we're going to put the cover on, put the pinion or the ring gear in, and we should be close to being done. Yeah. You want to take a break for lunch and then finish up after lunch, or? Oh sure, yeah. We could. Uh, Run up to Burger King or Subway or McDonald's. Or, oh, that sounds great. Or sure. uh, yeah. whatever. Yeah. If you want to zoom in, here's the zoom buttons right here. Okay. And uh, you can pan and tilt and do whatever you want. Put that on there and put another skin coat on it. So where's this guy got right about like this, right? Yeah, it looks close enough. Look right. Yeah. Let me get all the bolts for this thing. It's looking pretty good.
That sounds really good, doesn't it? It sounds great. But that sounds like your sauna, doesn't it? Yeah, my sauna's even louder than that. Oh, it is? Oh, jeez. It wakes up the neighbors. Oh, <laughs> got like almost a street pipe or something. It's got the uh, Jack Lawrence exhaust on it. I think the muffler's not that much in it. All right, you happy with that? Look all right to you? Yeah, that looks good. All right. Okay, now we can put the thing up there and then kind of feed one of these at a time to start it. All right, you got a little rag I can wipe oh, that finger off. There you go. <laughs> this stuff is nasty. Yeah, it is. You don't wear rubber gloves, you can't get that stuff off your fingers. All right, so this guy's gonna be somewhere here. Yeah, be conscientious of those shims. Just make yeah, sure you don't I'm seeing. jock them. Start this one here first. And that one. Somewhere. There's somewhere. Good to go. Nice to have those threads chased in there because if you don't, man, I tell you what. And it binds, it's a pain in yeah, the neck. There you go. Go ahead and start putting those babies in. Actually, yeah, that's, a, that's a short one right there. Oh, yeah, you're right. The rest of them are long. Well, hold on one second here. I forgot to do this. You have to seal the threads on these. They, they, they go all the way into the tranny. Is that a short one you just gave me? I don't think so. No? Nope. Felt like it was. Felt like it was short, wouldn't it? It did feel like it was short. Huh? I guess it's alright, huh? Yeah, there is a longer one. Okay. I don't think this is it. Hold on a second here. Pull that baby back out. Ah, uh, that looks long. Yeah, that's too long though. Yeah. There's too many threads. Let me see if I got one in between. I think this one here is one. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, they should go in about five threads, I believe. And how long was that one? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> now that it's in there. You know, it's in there. Can we pull it out? No. All right. That looks... No, that's sure. That's too long. Just need one more. And here's the, the short one here. The short one there, yeah. Oh, did you find another longer one? Yeah. Oh, okay. That one seemed to be okay. I thought it was anyway. Okay, there you go. See? Okay, and then here's another one right here.
bench maybe. Just mess with your rubber gloves. <laughs> 13 millimeters. Ah! <laughs> you were right. <laughs> So funny, I, I use like all kinds of electric you know, uh, ratchets. And, you know, you get a socket on there, and you can wrap up a glove in really no quickly time, huh? in no time. Okay. I have here a half inch wrench. Now, okay. Do the final, final snugging up. Final snugging up to the ridge. Feel that a lot better. Yeah. I think I'm good. Good. Super. Now, I want you to adjust these things backwards. Now, what you want to do when you adjust these Center them? Center them, yeah. Yep. That guy isn't too bad, yeah, is it? Yeah, it looks like it needs to go. What do you think? I think you're pretty close to begin with, yeah. All right. How about that next one? I can't even see it. Can you see it? Uh, you have to really look down in there. It looks like, if anything, it has to come out a couple of turns because of the difference. odd because this isn't lined up here. And maybe there's a... See how that's not lined yeah, up? Yeah, you're right. It just looks odd. What's up with that? I don't want to go back there. This one's not going back to the detent here. That's not a good thing, is it? Is it not going back? I don't know. Oh. Bolt's too long. Oh, that guy right there's too long. Yeah. All right, let's take him out then. There you go. Tried to rid of that one time before. Slide that reverse slider back and see what it looks like now. Yeah, hey, it looks better, God. doesn't it? Yeah, a lot better. All right, is this guy, this center guy, uh, first yeah. and second look okay? That, uh... Yeah, that's, that looks pretty good. Uh, here, why don't you take a look down there. To me, I just gotta 
going to come out just a little bit. I like that better. Okay. I'm happy. Yeah, that looks nice and straight there now. I don't know how to shut that guy off. Oh, it's a little right in the end there. Yeah, nice and straight. So, little lock nuts on there on the end. Yeah, put those. You know, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll put a little of this stuff. You like that stuff, don't you? Well, because what it, it threads all the way out you right. know, from the. <laughs> did those turn? Those this guy did turn a little bit. You might have to hold it with a screwdriver. You might have to bring it out Here, just a little bit. You, do it, you, can, you just have to hold it just a little bit. Yeah. Listen to those hummingbirds. Nice. Yeah, you get some get some more normal gloves. Sometimes what I'll do is after I get all done, I'll take this stuff and I'll clean all the you know, all the goop off there and make it look nice and clean. Yeah. I don't like to see all that goop hanging outside. Yeah, looks great. Okay, does it still turn? Shifts into all gears. Your finger? Oh, it's got the fingernail. Yeah, this is that stuff. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> Good job. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Okay, there's a little cap on this little cap yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah, right, one of these guys. Yeah, I got some red, that uh, that red gasket eliminator. Yeah. Where's your uh, rag here? There you go, okay. And then if you just goop with that thing and then come over here and just take a punch. And punch just a little goop around the outside? Yeah, around the outside edge, yeah. Well, I have to take the cap off it. Just feed it in through here? Yeah, let me try to get a, I don't know what, will this fit in there? No. It goes in like, uh, like uh, that. Correct, yeah. All right. Now we just need to get some kind of a, Just uh, tap that guy in. Yeah. I forgot to put one of those dudes in there when I put the bell housing on. And after I got all the all, way in, just yeah, all the way until it bottoms out. Bottomed out. Because yeah, the shaft. You know, that's what you can do if you want. Let's clean up here a little bit. All right. You can take that free wheel apart. And... Well, where do you want to eat? Uh... Yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's eat, eat the first, burgers yeah. while they're hot. Yeah. Well, the guys made some progress while I went for for Hamburgers. lunch. Uh, so you put the ring and pinion in. And what else did you do? Put the ring and pinion in and uh, tighten down these saddle bolts here. And you can feel there's, you can almost hear it. There's very little backlash. You want a little bit, but not a, a lot. Okay. So to me, it feels nice and tight. 
Uh, I think while you were gone, we put the rear cover on. Okay. And uh, adjusted the uh, the shift forks here, um, and made sure that everything uh, shifted properly. Now, one mistake we made: we had a bolt that went in here that was a little bit too long, and we couldn't get this reverse guy into the proper place. And uh, Jerry immediately saw the problem, and we pulled the bolt out, put the right size uh, length bolt in there, and uh, then adjusted these so they're centered, and uh, then went to the to the front and put the ring gear on. So you're still happy? I'm very happy. <laughs> I'm still happy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm still happy. Okay, that's the main thing. I guess it's time for lunch. Yeah. But now just rotate it, just, you know, one, and just put your thumb over it when you rotate it. Because them dudes are going to pop right out of there. That's the wrong end. Yeah. Wrong end. So what's the next plan here? So this is the freewheel mechanism. And uh, I'm a guy, I happen to like the freewheel feature on the Saabs. So uh, I want my freewheel to be functional. So the freewheel is now in this nice freewheel tool. And I'm going to take out the uh, ro uh, rollers and springs, and we're going to clean it out. Is that an early or a late style freewheel? This is the early one, so it's a six roller. Right. So you can just rotate it one, one after the other. See how they pop right out? I have a, a couple of sonnets, and uh, both of those have the free wheels locked out. But my 96, I want it to be functional. So the six roller are the early one, and they're a little stronger, I guess. That's what I've always heard, too. So what shall I do here? Okay, what you Jerry? should do is take this uh, aerosol and you know, clean all the corners just like you did the free wheel hub. All right. By the way, do you know what? Remember what direction that was rotating? No. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> it happens to be if you're in neutral, you know, I mean, if, if you get it in backwards. Yeah, I don't recall. <laughs> For these corners. Because gaskets aren't available anymore. I just happen to have that end cover gasket. Gasket making is almost imperative on these old cars. You have to learn how to how to do that. And I'll, I'll show you here. You um, maybe missed the bolt down below there, the little screw. That's where it went. Did you forget to put that in the middle there? <laughs> that screw into the table here? Leftover part? <laughs> Is it a leftover part? I think it's the leftover one. First, that's the sink. You can use spray glue. This is kind of a, what they call a high tech or a high tech. It's made when you put it on, the gaskets don't move. So you brush it on, make a mess, and you brush it on here too. Secret is let that dry for just a second. Actually, you want to hand me that air gun? Yes, sir. No, oh, oh, you're you're ready for it. Got a brand new 
safety knife blade and that's pretty slick. I'm anxious to see how he's going to do the inside cut line. That's, yeah. It's got to be a little trickier, huh? Just a little. Doing it blind, I would think. Actually, there's a secret to that, too. Probably speed it down to see, see the line. Huh? Yeah. It'll you know, squeeze it down, and you can kind of just follow the edge. You know, you kind of follow the edge. First of all, you just cut it. So you can kind of see where you're at. And you can cut just a little more. It's really not going to really hurt much to have you know this hanging inside, but you know just in case it, the paper deteriorates, you know you just don't want to contaminate your transmission. Okay, now you kind of got an idea where the edge is at. You can kind of see it. So then you just take and follow the. This is where it gets real thin at, so you have to kind of kind of cut it a little at a time. There's a hole. Not bad, <laughs> not bad. And you, just get, you got seven more to go. Gotta find the hole first. You push into it, it cuts it. One, two, three, four. The secret is getting those two things right near. Yeah, how do you do that? Um, just have to. Um, Studs have to yeah, fall you know, these. what the, they fall into these right here. Oh, okay. And the purpose of these is, is is when you shift, it pushes it over and, and locks it in, so you can only have select one at a time. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's kind of what they call a lockout or a, oh yeah, lockout. And just a matter of. There you go. That's it. How do you know you got it in place? You could actually see. You can actually mm -hmm. see in there. Yeah. There. There you go. You do the rest. All right.
first, second, third, fourth, reverse. Hey. It works. There we go. It's alive. Why you got your fingers greasy? Yeah. Uh, put a light coating on this gasket right here. Uh, sure. Oh, of, Permatex. Of this stuff? Uh, no, that's oh, right. Oh, the Permatex. Yeah. yeah, just a kind of light coating. On both sides? Uh, yeah. Just, and yeah, then when you screw it in there, then that'll be the seal for your speedometer. Secret about these trainers, you gotta, gotta clean all the goop off and make them look like they haven't been gone into. That's a secret. That's, a se that's one secret, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody puts this goop on there and it just runs everywhere and it just looks like goo. People would rather think they have a pristine, never been touched transmission, e right? <laughs> Straight out of the factory. Huh? Okay, you get it on there? I did, yes. Okay. Like we're down to the finishing touches here. Yeah, we are. Now, uh, the size is that guy. It's a pretty good size. You know, I don't have a socket that. I got a socket that's big enough, but my socket's too fat. Oh, I won't go over it. What size socket do you think that is? I may have that right. Yeah. That's probably bigger than. Uh, Inch and a, inch think, and a quarter? Yeah. It's the next yeah. size bigger than an inch and a quarter. It's not coming loose, yeah. <laughs> That looks good. All right. Tom, we got it, Tom. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, use a clean rag. What size is the the big nut on on a 900 uh, uh, crankshaft? Uh, it's 26 millimeter. 26. Yeah. I think it is. It's I got a long, a, <laughs> a long uh, uh, box end wrench that's the right size. Actually, I, I got it pretty tight with my. Uh, you know what different uh, makes a good mechanic from a, a bad mechanic? Is if you strip a bolt using a pair of ice grips. That's what makes a good different between a good mechanic and a bad mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> They're using pliers. No, you using pliers. Alrighty, now you wanna let's put that free wheel together. Alright. Is that all clean? And all blown out? I did clean it. How's it look to you? Yeah. Not too bad? Looks good and clean, yeah. And just let me make sure all these are all cleaned up. A lot of times what I do on these is okay. use plenty of grease so they don't pop out. And Back to the freewheel assembly here. So what I'm doing is uh, inserting these springs in here with some grease to hold them in. Afraid to use some grease. So what you're saying is put more grease in there. <laughs> what are you telling me? <laughs> All right. So 
So the ten roller ones have they, they have twenty twenty springs. springs. Yeah, yeah. They have twenty springs in them. They're awful. And the six rollers have six springs. So they have two springs side by side on the they, rollers. They do. Yeah, each roller has a double spring. Okay, there you go. What's okay. next? Now, go ahead and set it in the tool here. Put it in the right way. So, uh, it has to go the other way. The wear pattern. Yeah, the numbers go towards the outside. Okay. Okay. Now, what you do, um, you'll stick this in here. Yeah. And then what you do is you'll, you'll put, a, put a roller in there. Any grease yeah, on that? Put, put some grease on that too, yeah. Just something like that? Or? Yeah, something about like that. You have to go fit in there just right. Yeah, sure. You might just do something like that. There you go. And then you press it and roll it. Yeah, then you just, you just roll it. Yeah. Then you go to the next one, put a little... It's like loading a six-shooter, huh? <laughs> we want to use this. Just get it up there and you can pick it up and put it in there square. There you go, like that. <laughs> and push it. Get it in the groove. It's just the same size as that opening. <laughs> I see that. There you go. Got that one done. I have more grease all over the place here. Then. I don't know how these guys do that. Do it with hose clamps. I just I've done it before with a, a big rubber band. Oh, have you? Yeah. Pick it up right in the middle with a magnet. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that works yeah. nice. Tool specific to the six roller design? Uh, no, it'll do the ten also. Oh, well. Okay. Push it down. There you go. Now, when you get the last two, you, that's when now things start to get tight. Okay, push it down now. Huh? Must have missed something. Oop, I can't roll it backwards. Uh oh. No, no, I just say uh oh, just to say uh oh. And we'll slide it up here so you know there's nothing, no openings there right now. Yeah. Very nice. There it is. All right. Okay, now come over here. You might want to get on this side and shoot from this way. Over here. Oh, me, me yeah, no, here. no, no, you get on the, this All side right. over here. So. What, what you want to do is you yeah, you got to you got to rotate this thing around to where this is open here because that's that's why the only cut way this to out. get it in. Okay. Yeah. Now go ahead and engage you know the the tool into the you know, the and make sure the. Okay, now then what you do is stick the thing in there and you, you just rotate it, you know, get you engage the teeth and then just just rotate the thing, you know, uh, you get out get out on the edge. All right. And when you rotate it, push it in. So which way does it rotate? It'll only rotate one way. There you go. So I'll pull it out? Yeah, just make sure, you know, look in there and make sure it's in all the way. Otherwise you'd be doing this job all over again. All right. And now this guy should just come right. No. Nope. Oh, he didn't. didn't. go in all the way. Yeah. And just you know, just rotate it. Do it again. I'll come out with another thing, and just just twist it and push it in at the same time. No, you're not twisting. You're pushing in without right. twisting. Yeah, okay. You can actually kind of push down on it too. 
So rotate it. There you go. And do it again. There you go. Do it again. Okay, now look inside there. Yep. See? It's all the way in. There I see. Go. There it is. All the way in. Very nice. Yeah, well, how do you, the heck do you do that with uh, with a rubber, rubber, rubber band? Or you gotta be. I, I, I don't know how you do it with a rubber I've band. I've done it before. It's no fun. Uh -huh. But I've done it before. Yeah, I'll make sure I, get, I send a little bearing here with you for this here. Oh, there's a little guy yeah. in there. Right. A little um, bearing, and then I'm going to build like a little bracket to bend over here to with you know a little piece of metal to keep it in there. So when you ship it, they drop it, it'll pop right out. Yeah, we don't want that. And you know what? We're done. We're done. It's great, huh? Yeah. We are done. We're done. Woohoo! Yeah. Good job, Eric. All right. Okay. Ship it, as they say. Ship it. Ship it to Vermont. <laughs> That's great. One tranny. Yes. That was fun. Yeah, it's great. All right. If we only had the car right here to put it in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're, we're on a roll, aren't we? <laughs> 42 minutes of a video. Of, a video of which it can be probably reduced to 10-15 minutes maybe. Yeah.